Hong Kong was once known for its low crime rate. However, back in the 1980s, the people of Hong Kong shuddered in fear at the mention of names like Rainy Night Killer, Hong Kong Butcher, or Killer in the Toilet. This was the first serial murder case in Hong Kong, but its severity and nature still haunt to this day. Lam Korwan was born and raised in Malaysia. His father was a martial artist who often beat his wife and children. When Lam was young, he was beaten unconscious by his father. When the family moved to Hong Kong, Lam's father's violent nature improved. However, witnessing continuous domestic violence for a long time, Lam became quiet, introverted, gloomy, and antisocial. At his new school in Hong Kong, he struggled to make friends, so he immersed himself in video games. Since the late 1970s, as a teenager, Lam had secretly collected pornographic magazines ordered from England but didn't let anyone, including his family, know because he was too ashamed. Every day, he kept these magazines in a locked safe. No one in the house, including Lam's younger brother, knew about the existence of these magazines. Only when no one was at home did he take them out to look at. Because of his reclusive nature and lack of closeness with anyone in the house, no one noticed Lam's strange behavior. After getting bored of watching pornographic magazines, Lam Korwan decided to buy an instant camera to capture his own photos. At the age of 18, he sneaked into a public restroom and secretly took photos of women using the toilet. However, this sick joke didn't last long. He was soon discovered and chased away. On one occasion, Lam threatened a young girl near the public restroom with a knife to take pornographic photos. Before the act was completed, he was caught by the police and taken to the station. A psychiatrist confirmed Lam Korwan was mentally ill, so he was exempted from punishment. After that, Lam was admitted to Castle Peak Hospital, Hong Kong, for psychiatric treatment. Over three months later, he was released and given a fresh start in life. The first murder occurred at 4 a.m. on February 3, 1982. As usual, Lam drove his taxi to Tsim Sha Sui restaurant to pick up passengers. The female passenger Chan Fung Lan, 21, worked at the Palace nightclub, got drunk after work and went to eat with colleagues. While Lam was driving, the intoxicated woman asked to stop by the roadside to vomit, then demanded to return to Tsim Sha Sui restaurant. A few minutes later, she changed her mind again. Being manipulated made Lam lose his temper. He drove to a deserted spot and used a long electrical cord to strangle Chan until she stopped breathing. This first murder was not planned, but it set the stage for subsequent events. In the following seven months, Lam killed three more women. He took great risks by taking photos of the corpses to be developed at a Photoshop. The Photoshop staff became suspicious and asked Lam about the handcuff photos. Lam claimed to be a medical laboratory technician and that these images were for medical research. The photo developer believed his explanation. However, Lam's luck ran out on August 17, 1982. The Photoshop employee reported to the police after seeing photos of a naked woman with cuts and burns on her skin. The photos were seized. The next day, two plainclothes policemen waited outside the photo shop in Sim Sha Sui. Lam only appeared in the evening. Upon unrolling the film containing Long's photos, Lam was caught. The photo developer noticed a large burn mark on the model's body. In another photo, the model's chest appeared to be cut off. Horrified by what he saw, the photo developer immediately called the police. It didn't take long for the police to find evidence to convict Lam. They asked Lam to open an old metal box under the bed. Inside were two sealed jars containing sensitive parts of women soaked in formaldehyde. Because of his penchant for preserving trophies in jars, the media called Lam the bottle killer. Additionally, Lam was nicknamed the Rainy Night Murderer because he often took advantage of darkness and rainy nights to lure passengers into his taxi and commit his crimes. 
Lamb confessed to the murders, revealing to the police the details of his crimes. In Chan's murder case, he brought the body home at 5 a.m., hid it under the sofa, and then lay on the bed waiting for his family to wake up for work. When his family left, Lamb spread plastic on the floor and dismembered the body, taking photos during the process. Lamb disposed of the body parts at Xing Mon, near Sha Tin. A week later, the police found these body parts but could not identify the victims. Lamb's next murder was meticulously planned. He bought specialized equipment including surgical instruments and formaldehyde. Once again, the victim was a bar employee. However, he did not feel remorseful for killing the first three victims. Lamb told the police that they were all bar employees and useless to society. The fourth victim, Long Wysum, was a different case. The 17-year-old student called a taxi to go home after a party with classmates. It was 9.30 p.m., much earlier than Lamb's previous murders. He tied the girl's hands in the taxi and talked to her for hours about family, religion, and life. At 4 a.m., when the girl was asleep, Lamb strangled her and took the body home. While setting up lights for filming, a light bulb fell on the girl's thigh, causing a burn mark on the skin, leaving a mark that the Photoshop employee saw in the photos leading to Lamb's arrest. During Lamb's trial, only men were allowed in the jury. On April 3, 1983, he was charged with the murder of four people and sentenced to death by hanging. This sentence was later commuted to life imprisonment. Lamb's family could not sell the apartment because no one wanted to live where the murderer lived. They had to continue living there. And they paid the price for their son. At the front door of the apartment, they hung a painting of Zhong Kue, a character who drives away evil spirits in Chinese folklore. As of now, Lam is still in prison. He will surely face the deserved punishment for what he has done. So, what do you think about this heinous killer? Feel free to leave your thoughts in the comments below. And now, goodbye.